solving quadratic equations. So we've moved off the vertex form of the quadratic and now we're going to talk about the factored form and what does the factored form give you? Um, how does this all work? So when you have a quadratic function, you have y equals something. y is equal to this side of the equation. And that means that I can put anything I want in for x here and get an answer for y. I could put in 1 and I would get 3 minus 2 plus 1. I could put in 100, 1,000, a billion, and I would get an answer for y. So those are the points that are defining the shape of the parabola. When I have a quadratic equation equals a number, so equals 0, equals 10, equals minus 10, whatever the number is, I'm trying to find what values for x will make this equation equal to a certain value, in this case 0. When you have a quadratic equation and you're trying to find the solutions to this, you can have three different possibilities. You could have two solutions or two roots. In other words, if this was a function, it would look something like this. But what you're finding in an equation is just these values. So it could be that you have one value like this where the parabola could have been going something like this. Or maybe you have no solutions. Maybe the parabola is here, in which case it will never be equal to that value. So you can have one, two, or no solutions. And you're not defining a parabola, but it is coming from the function if you set this to y, you would have the function of this and you would be finding the zeros. But when you have an equation, you're only finding these points. Okay? Okay, so let's look at this. If I asked you what makes this equation equal to zero, you could probably tell me, you'd probably say five. If I put in a five here, I would have three y times zero is zero, and that's good. So, um, y equals 5 is one solution and another solution would be this one here and and don't forget about this one up front if there's a variable with it not if a constant was there all by itself but because it says 3y it means if I put in 0 for y here I would have 0 times minus 5 which would also be 0 so y equals 5 and y equals 0 are the solutions to this quadratic equation now, if I have something like this, now it's a little more difficult, but still, this is already in factored form. So all you have to do is take each of these little factors, set them equal to zero, and solve for the variable. So I'm going to say 3t minus 2 equals zero, 3t is equal to 2, so t is equal to 2 over 3. So that's one solution and I have two. The other one, t plus three, and you probably don't need to write it out like this, right? You probably could figure that out in your head. Sometimes these ones, though, you might want to write them out because you might say minus two thirds by mistake. So set it to zero and solve. So number three here, same kind of work. Can we do this in our heads? Four x plus three, 3 to the other side, that's minus 3, so 4x equals minus 3 over 4. And I'll write this one up just in case that was too much all at once. 5x minus 2 equals 0, 5x is equal to 2, x is equal to 2 over 5. Many, many a time I've seen students divide these the wrong way. They might say 4 thirds by mistake. So it's probably a good idea until you feel very confident that you write it out like this and then you won't make a mistake. Okay, this one. Whoa, just a minute. This is an in factored form. This is a quadratic, not in factored form. So your job is to factor it first. Is there a common factor? No, I can't divide 2 into 9. So I need to use my product sum rules. So remember, that's another lesson you might want to check up if you've forgotten. Product of the first and the last, product is 8. The sum of the one in the middle, 9. 
Find the two numbers that match the above. Take your time. Continue to fiddle. Hmm. Okay, what multiplies to 8 and adds to 9? Pretty easy. 8 and 1. Okay, now it's a complex trinomial because the coefficient of the um, variable with a degree 2 is not 1. So I make two fractions with these numbers. So I take 8 and 1. I put them over 2 and I reduce. This one is done. This one becomes 4 over 1. And so we have the variables on the bottom. So I have y plus 4, 2y plus 1. So y plus 4, 2y plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so now I have it in factored form. You might want to double check. 2y squared plus 1 plus 8 is 9 plus 4. Okay, so now I want to know what value for y makes this 0. So don't stop here thinking you're pretty smart and you know how to factor. You would get y plus 4 equals 0, so y equals negative 4. And 2y plus 1 equals 0, 2y equals negative 1, y equals minus 1 half. And those are your two solutions. Okay, don't try to be too cocky, don't try to go too fast. Take your time, do it right. Okay, number five. Oh, you remember these? A difference of squares. Yes, I heard you. <laughs> so this is m plus 1 times m minus 1, right? Set equal to 0. So m is equal to, well, that's minus 1, that's plus 1. So I can say plus or minus 1. Another difference of squares. So that gives me the square root of this one was 4x, square root 5. So that gives me 4x plus 5 times 4x minus 5 equals 0. I'll solve one of them the long way, and we'll just change the sign for the other one because it's the same. So minus 5 over 4, and this one is going to be x equals 5 over 4. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so remember we're solving equations, not functions. Functions, another story. Okay, this one, 3x squared plus 9x minus 30 equals 0. Okay, so we've got some factoring to do. Did you check to see if there was a common factor? Because yes, there is. Look, 3, 3, 3 goes into each, all, each and all. <laughs> each and all of them. So I'm going to take out a 3. Minus 10 equals 0. Okay, I'm looking for a product of the first and the last. Now remember this 3 just stays out here. That's like your A value. So I'm looking for a product of minus 10 and a sum of positive 3. Two numbers multiply to give me negative 10. The same two numbers add to be 3. Well, 2 and 5 make 10. But I want it to be negative, and I want the sum to be positive, so the larger number has to be positive. 5 minus 2 is 3, and 5 times minus 2 is minus 10. I don't have to do make two fractions. If you want, you could put 1 under them. So I have x plus 5, x minus 2. So 3 times x plus 5 times x minus 2 equals 0. Now set each of those little baby brackets equal to 0. And that would give you minus 5 and plus 2. x equals minus 5. x equals 2. There are two solutions. Okay, number 8, a little bit different. It says solve for x when y equals 0 and when y equals minus 10. Okay, so when y equals 0, so I'm going to set the equation equal to 0, or set the function equal to 0, and now I have an equation to solve. I'm looking for a product of minus 28 and a sum of minus 3. And your head should be taken away. Four sevens are 28. I can make a 3 out of that. I want the larger number to be negative because my sum is negative. So minus 7 times 4 is minus 28 and minus 7 plus 4 is minus 3. So those are my two numbers. The coefficient is 1. It's a simple trinomial. So I'm going to say x minus 7 times x plus 4 equals 0. 
So x is equal to 7, x is equal to minus 4. And there we go. Now that's the first part. Now it says what happens when y equals minus 10? Well, set y to minus 10 then, right? So instead of setting it to 0, like we did to find y equals 0, I like these little faces, I'm going to set it equal to minus 10. So x squared minus 3x minus 28 is equal to minus 10. Okay, well I can't factor it with this on this side. So I'm going to bring it over to the other side of the equation by adding 10 to both sides. x squared minus 3x minus 18 is equal to 0. And now I'm looking for a product, oh, I put it here, product of minus 18 and a sum of minus 3. What multiplies to 18? How about 6 and 3? What one's negative? The 6 because I want a sum of negative 3. So 6, oh sorry, negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. No, I did that wrong just after I said that, didn't I? 3 times negative 6, because I changed their position. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, and 3 plus negative 6 is negative 3. Okay, so I have 3 and minus 6. So I have x plus 3, x minus 6 equals 0. And now I want to know what makes these equal to 0. So x is equal to minus 3, and x is equal to 6. Now I'm going to um, sketch this for you because I think it would be a good idea if you get an idea of what's happening here. So when I set this equal to zero, I'm trying to find a place to put it. Oh, I could probably squeeze it in right here. Um, it's going to be long. Let's put it up here. When I set this equal to zero, I got seven and minus four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's what I found. I found this dot right here. And when x was um, 7 and minus 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Okay, so what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to sketch this function knowing the zeros. When, when I set this to 0, I'm finding the height of 0. Where on the x-axis is the height 0? And those were the two dots I found. Can you tell me where the axis of symmetry is going to be? Now remember the axis of symmetry is right between two points that are at the same height. So you can either use these points or you could go down to, let's say this is minus 10 here just for ease. And I have when x is 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's down here. And when x is minus 3, Okay, so we've got 6 and minus 3. So this parabola is coming down like this, right? We haven't found the middle yet. So what is between 7 and minus 4? If you can hear in the background, that is hail on May the 9th, believe it or not. So if I add these together and divide by 2, I'll find the midpoint. Right? This is finding the axis of symmetry. So minus 4 plus 7, minus 4 plus 7 is 3, divided by 2 is 1 and a half. So the axis of symmetry is going to be right here. How low does that go? Mm. So this is going to be 3 over 2, right? X equals axis of symmetry. That's this line here. So if I want to know how low it goes, how far down does this go, all I have to do is plug this three halves into this equation and solve. And uh, we'll leave that for another lesson, but just to give you an idea of what we found. So we found the height here, we found these two zeros when it was set to minus 10, and these two when the equation was set to zero. And then we could find the axis of symmetry because it's halfway between, and then we could plug in three halves into this equation to find the height of the function. And it's going to go off my page, so I've decided to end it there. We'll do more of that very soon. 
Okay, what happens if the equation looks like this? Well, your job is to put it in descending order and set it equal to zero. So all you have to do in this case is move the 27 to this side of the equation. And now I'm looking for a product of minus 27 and a sum of minus 6. Mm, it multiplies to 27, negative 27 as a matter of fact and a sum of minus six, so one's positive, one's negative. Why do I know that? Because the product is negative. So I know nine times three, I can make a six. So I'm gonna put nine and three here. Which one is negative? I want the sum to be negative. So the negative nine will give me a minus six. A simple trinomial, I don't have to make a fraction with the first on the bottom because the first is a one. You can put a one there if you want. So I have x minus 9, x plus 3. x minus 9 times x plus 3. And you can see that my solutions now are going to be 9 and minus 3, which are the opposite signs of these as well, right? x equals 9 and x equals minus 3. Okay, and the last one I'm going to do, this one here, again, it's not in descending order it's not set equal to zero so that's your first job so I'm going to say 2x squared and bring this over minus x bring that one over minus 15 equals zero it's always better if you leave this as positive if you had brought this over here you should divide out a minus one before you do the factoring that just means the parabola would be concave down right Okay, so here we have a product of minus 15 and a sum of minus 1. Well, multiplies to 15. Oh, miss have rot. Product of the first and the last. Sum of the one in the middle. Find the numbers that match above to come to good fiddle. Product should be minus 30. 2 times minus 15. It adds to minus 1. I thought, oh no, that's not going to work. Nothing multiplies to minus 15, that's to negative 1. Okay, so here we go. Minus 30 and a sum of minus 1. I know already 6 and 5 make 30. And 6 and 5, I can make a 1. I want the larger number to be negative because the sum has to be negative. Okay, I've got the two magic numbers. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom, reduce, and then you can stop. That one's done. This one, minus 3 over 1. The answer is there before your eyes, the x on the bottom, the other on top. So x minus 3, x minus 3, and 2x plus 5. 2x plus 5. Double check, 2x squared plus 5 minus 6. Yes, minus 15. Excellent, Miss Havra. Okay, now set each of the brackets equal to 0 and solve for x. So x is 3. 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. You know why we're doing that, right? I'm hoping I explained that well enough. Why do we set these brackets equal to 0? Because if one of these things is 0, 0 times the other will be 0. So that's why we do it. Okay, so that's how you solve quadratic equations and a little bit of what we're finding. And remember that when you're setting something equal to zero, you're just finding points. You can either have zero, one, or two solutions. You are not sketching a function unless you have something like this and they asked you to sketch this. Of course, that could be done as well. But for now, that's all you're doing. Okay, we'll get into more stuff soon. Hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up, comment. Uh, subscribe and if you have any questions feel free to leave them below. Bye for now.